For oh, that, God. yeah, Jay, we got to get to the one of the Browns move. Oh yeah, we didn't go really ahead. Hit on yeah, it. well, I, it's I didn't a, think much of this move, but go ahead. It's a small move, and I just forgot his name. It's Maurice just, Hurst. Maurice, Maurice Hurst. Hurst. So Maurice Hurst. But here's the interesting thing. I don't think this is a nothing move. It. I know he's been hurt. He's he didn't play last year. The year before, it's I think really he played two, two games. Years. He's basically not played for two years. Right. But his first three years in the league, he was a starting caliber player, and that listen. We all get enamored with the big, sexy names and the superstars. We do. But what have we said for the last year? The Browns have some superstars, a good amount. They don't have enough starters. The Browns have taken three replacement player defensive linemen, kicked them out the door, and they've added two good starters. Right. And this guy, who, if healthy, is an adequate starting player. He's a, he can be an average player. He was an average player his first three years in the league. He's not special. He's not a great run stopper, but he's a guy in college and early in his NFL career who was able to get some pressure on the quarterback from the interior. And if nothing else, it, at the very least, if he's healthy, he'll be a good third tackle. But right now, he'd probably be the starter if healthy. Well, and he's a better player, if healthy, than any of the guys they have. I'm not saying he's going to be Ethan Posick, but it's similar to Posick yes. in a guy who's oh, had geez, a ton of injuries. Oh, if they injuries. get that much out of him? I'm not saying they're going to. No. Yeah. I'm just I saying. I know what you're saying. It's a flyer. It's a, it's, it's a it's, flyer. It's a, it's a no-risk flyer of a, a decent talent. It's right. a move on the margins, yeah. which they have, we've pointed out time and again, they've actually excelled at finding value on the margins in yeah. free agency. They've struggled on their big swings. But these one-year guys, they've actually gotten a lot of value out of. And that, yeah. I think, is clearly their, you know, as they're sitting in the in their war room coming up with their chess strategy. Right. I, we had said it all year long, felt like studs and duds, particularly yes. on that defensive front. Right. Yeah, you had Clowney and you had Garrett, but you had a whole bunch of Pringles chips in between them. That's right. The, I think they got four legit like starters now. They're not right. all great, but they're lit starters. They're going to fill spots. Yes. And they're not going to be gaping holes right. that we talk about every Monday. As right. How is this guy even in uniform? Exactly. They, this, this, these are brake pad moves. If you got scrub and brake pads and you change your brake pads, that's great. That's beautiful, right? But if you ain't got no good tires, you might as well chalk the brake pads up because you can't go nowhere without the tires. So these are good moves. They, I like them. They, they're really savvy. However, these moves mean nothing. They are only validated and only validated if they get playmaking receivers. Because if they don't get those, you can have average defense alignment and plug and play and all that good stuff. And that sounds good, but you're going to need about 40 points. You, you need them points, bro. So the defense will be better. I give them that. I like what they've done. I'm still on the B. I moved it up to a B-ish, B-minus-ish, you know, what, what, one of those ones. But I'm still saying, to make this whole move look good, you need them receivers. And I still need two. I'm not going to knock y'all. Y'all B-minus still, but it has, it has more room to grow if you get to play makers, I, and I think they could get them. I think we all agree the Browns to still need at, at least one proven good, good receiver. Yeah, uh, but absolutely. But here's the thing, do. but again, G, like, you can't do everything on the first day. I mean, the Browns have added four starters on defense, mm -hmm. definitely three, potentially four first is healthy, mm -hmm. and that's good. They're all at least slight upgrades. Yeah. I think, I, I think you know, Hurst is a slight upgrade over whoever the hell they were starting at defensive tackle. Same thing with Thornhill. Certainly the other two spots on the D-line are big upgrades. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, you got to be happy with it. Yeah. It, it, when if we go to training camp and the Browns are looking at the same wide receiving core that we have now plus a rookie, none of us are going to be happy. But there's a long time between yeah, now and training. You're camp. right. None of us will be happy. Yeah. McNuggets has one thing he's looking for in the wide receiver that they bring over. Like one thing this person must do every day. And that's start their morning with a built bar because if they don't, they might not be yeah. healthy and we need <laughs> the Browns receivers to be healthy. And whoever they sign, trade for, or acquire in the draft, They'll be using promo code LOCKDOWN15 for 15% off Built Bars at Built.com, getting those 20 grams of protein in with every meal. Can't I do it. have one question on Hurst for you guys before we move on to the rest of the moves here. With Tomlinson and Hurst, at least based off PFF grades, which is not the end-all be-all, two guys who are better from interior as a pass rusher than as a run stuffer. Right. See, but are you I worry that this hasn't addressed the issue we still had last year with those two guys? Well... I, that's a fair point. I think it's misleading, though, with Tomlinson because Tomlinson was better against the run this past year. In his career, he's been a very good run stopper. This year, his run 
defense was down a little bit. I don't think he's bit. saying he's not. I yeah. think he's saying that if you're looking at a, one's a fastball, one's a curveball. Yeah. Um, his strength is getting after quarterbacks. I think that's and the case with Hurst. I don't think that's the case. Do with, you? With I always, I always thought it was. I was reading the text. Yeah. Say it yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> that's he was saying. Tom Tomlinson. Tomlinson and is better against. Or at least better. last year was better against the pass than the run. Yeah. And so McNugget's point is where where this team really needed help was a stalwart yeah, yeah. run stopper. Yeah. And the guys they brought in, that's not their call. But I guess my question would be, who'd you want them to go get? Like, who else was out there that the, was going to be that guy? And, and here's the thing, I guys. don't know. I mean, if you can go get Deron Payne, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Well, Sign we me all up. knew that wasn't going to happen. But these guys <laughs> are, like, Tomlinson's big, his grade was a little down against the run, but they're still both adequate run stoppers. Look at the quarterbacks in the AFC. Most of these teams are going to try to beat you through the air. Yes, <laughs> the Browns got killed and teams went run heavy against them. Yeah. The, I think these guys are good enough. They pro- they definitely need another linebacker at some point. That, maybe that's something they're going to do in the draft. But they've gotten better on the defensive line overall, and that's the most important thing to me. Uh, well, I think as a defensive lineman, um, all defenses are created equal when he, in terms of run and pass. Some defenses are predicated on we will stop the run no matter what they say. And you can do that with enough people up there. Some people say we're, we're going to get pressure with four guys. And so that, you know, they're not going to do too much. If you hear that as a defensive lineman, you're like, well, look, I might want to hit my move quick because we not getting no cavalry coming in. Yeah. So there's things you can do. It's not just on the defensive lineman to, to, to you know, beat their guy one on one. It's also giving me some layups, right? Like, Hey, it, it would work once in a while if you give me an extra guy up front. Five versus f- five versus five. I like five versus five instead of your front four. And mixing up your coverages and mixing. See, the Browns did a lot of just lining up in what they was going to be in and just showing nothing. The same thing pre-snap. Nothing exactly. Nothing, it was- nothing. It, there's no moves. It was just like, here we are. This is what we're doing. Come I, get us. I, and I just, I want to go back real quick uh, before Bull hijacked us with Little League. <laughs> when, when you want to blame uh, Joe Woods, and, and I agree, Joe deserves a, a, a fair amount. I think 80 is a little high. And to the point we're kind of talking about, I think Joe can and throw his hands up and say, look at what you gave me. Well, look, look at the defensive tackles you gave me. I'm not making excuses me, right? for Joe. However, I think the combination was lethal. And here's what I mean by the combination. The lack of power up front and Joe's conservative ways yeah. where he did not want to get beat. Joe was going into every game saying, just don't get exposed. Just don't get beat. So that, uh, what did he do? He just blanded down the off of the defense and came with four guys all the time. Let let me give you an an, uh, an example of this. JB, there's one thing I do like about JB is when he said, look, you guys clap it up. Every time you get a defensive uh, uh, three seconds, we'll take that. You know why? Because that we want to be aggressive. We want to be living on the edge. If we get a couple of these calls in the defense in three seconds, it's a point. Who cares? We're going to do it again next week. But with Joe Woods, he was scared to even give up the – he's like, nope, nothing over and the top. And you can't blame him. Nothing over the top. Because he didn't have, to, have the horses. And, and So we, it was a lethal combination. You yeah. had a conservative coach with no horses up front. He played it by the book, and everybody from week three on knew exactly what they were going to see when they played the Browns. Death by a million cuts. And I think the biggest reason that a coach can have success or can fail, half of the battle in the NFL is knowing what the other guy is going to do. It's the same in baseball. If you know what pitch is coming, your odds of success improve dramatically. If you know for certain what a team is going to do, your chances of stopping that improve dramatically. Sure. And when the team, when teams played the Browns, they looked at the tape. They knew what Joe's body of work said, and what it said was, "We're never going to have to worry about exotic blitzes. We're not going to have to keep guys in to help. We're going to be able to push the ball downfield, either through the air or on the ground, because he's only sending four, and we know where it's coming from." And pick and up. none of the three of the four weren't any good. And the three of the four were just jags. Yeah, and, that's and it. By the way, I will. I'll, I'll downgrade that a little bit. Eighty-five is high. 
the, you know, that's the knee jerk. You're going to go 84, aren't you? I'm a, no. 77? <laughs> I'm going to go down to, to, to 69%. Oh, I like that. That's a good 69%. number. 69%. I'm sticking Lunch. with 85. Nice. Yes. I'm sticking with uh, Now, th- again, the hand that he was dealt, yeah. you know, he's not going to s- go poker face and go all in with a, a couple of twos, a four, and a six. And, 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 then, so, and then, Jay, on top of that, you had Jadavian Clowney telling him, hey, bro, I'm not playing on first and second down, dog. <laughs> I know. You can yeah. talk that it up. It was what? a stack deck. It was a stack deck against Joe. Come on. But all of that being said, I think the problems that we saw, the consistent blown coverages, yeah. the gashes constantly from teams that had no business running the ball on us the way they did, I think that was just the wrong guy leading the wrong team, and it was a disaster. 